Hi guys and welcome to another unboxing video and in this video we're looking at the Nikkor 200 to 500 mm f5.6 my goodness gracious me am I looking forward to this unboxing I have been so looking forward to looking at this lens this purchase is a culmination of research that first took place probably about 18 months ago now maybe even longer and it was a toss-up between this lens and the Tamron 150 to 600. Uh, but I'll tell you my findings and uh, tell you why I went for this lens. This lens, at its uh, best aperture, were they to have 5.6 throughout the whole zoom range, whereas the Tamron or the Sigma Sport, uh, in fact, got worse progressively. And that was a big deciding factor when purchasing this lens together with the fact that this lens also has superior VR stabilization. I asked a lot of people who own this and own the other two lenses too. And uh, if you've got a Nikon camera, then I suggest probably keep with the Nikkor mount series. The VR is absolutely superb. Given that this box is huge, I was expecting a little bit more in the way of packing. Quite disappointed to be honest with you, um, but remarkably surprised that everything's intact. As I lift the lens out, I'm faced with the weight of this thing. Goodness me, it's quite significant, and it's significantly heavier than my f2.8 70-200mm lens, with which I'll show you a physical comparison later. Well, let's have a look and see what we've got inside here. Well, obviously there's the lens, but I'll probably go back to that in more depth in a second. In fact, I know I will. Okay, so we've got the obligatory instructional manual. Uh, it's just the warranties and the guidelines for basic use, use a sort of bump and I've got to be quite honest with you, I've never looked at one. I tend to get all my information either from online or Nikon Direct. And in this bag we have a lens bag, you can call it that if you like, but um, it's more like a lens sock. Very flimsy, it's not even branded. Um, very disappointed. Uh, rubbishy material, the drawstring at the top is poorly put together and useless. I don't don't rate that at all. It's not it's it's rubbish to be quite honest with you. Um, let's have a look here. What do we have in this box? Well this is obviously the lens hood, I hope it is. So just undo that. Just a bit disappointed with that given how much you're paying for the lens you would expect to have a good case or no case at all. It's probably better off leaving something out. The lens hood is huge uh, instant feel of the lens hood, um, reasonable-ish quality, I wouldn't say it's high quality, certainly it doesn't feel the same quality as plastic that's used on my f2.8 70-200 and uh, yeah it feels inferior plastic uh, but you can always get aftermarket stuff to be fair uh, but it's enough to keep the light off. Uh, there's been people online who said this doesn't stay on properly and some people have said that they've had uh, to put it on with a bit of tape or certainly to stop it from moving so hopefully I'm not going to be in that bag hopefully this might actually work and fit how it should do the lens weighs 2.3 kilograms which is just over five pounds therefore the weight is quite significant the lens is made of 19 elements three of which are ED glass hence the weight the F stops go from F5.6 to F32, so quite a range of movement there. But the good thing is it stays at F5.6 throughout the whole range. Construction feels good, feels solid, mainly metal and rubber on the outside. Not all of it rubber, but uh, it feels pretty good. I think for the money that's spent on this, it's extremely good value for money. You're getting a lot here. Another addition to this lens is you've got the uh, tripod collar ring, uh, which uh, has a foot attached to it. Um, there are better ones available on the market. This is okay, certainly good enough for my needs. I have looked at the other aftermarket ones and for spending 150 quid just on a piece of metal that does the same thing. I hardly see the money value in that to be honest with you, so happy with this one. This is an FX lens and works well with full frame cameras. If mated with a DX cropped camera, you'll find that the zoom range will be massively increased and that will range from 300 to 750 millimeters. All this in a relatively small package. It's amazing. This is an excellent bit of kit. Rather being stuck at 500 or 600 millimeters, you have a massive amount of flexibility to range from 200 or 300, depending on the camera system you're using, to 500 and 750 millimeter. 
Oh goodness me, what a range of movement you've got there. It's perfect. Coupled with the fact you can focus as little as 2.2 meters or just over seven feet is remarkable. The lens hood is huge, but that's expected to be. After all, it is a 500 millimeter lens. Now, given the reports of it not fitting correctly or coming off mid use, I'm just gonna put it on gingerly just so I don't force anything. He says, forcing it just so I can see it clicks into place and see what does come loose like they say it's going to. No, oh, it feels okay. I'm using a lot of pressure there. I'm a strong guy, but oh, that stays put. Happy with that. What a relief. If you're wishing to add a filter, then you'll have to get a big one, 95 millimeters. The camera in its closed state is 267 millimeters long as based on the edge of the lens to the lens mount. If you extend it and then add the lens hood to it, that is massively increased. If you reverse the lens hood and place it back on the lens and stow it away, you've got a lock button on the side too, which allows it to not creep forwards in travel. This will fit into most backpacks. To the left of the lens at the front, you've got a locking switch, which allows you to lock at 200 mm through travel or just for normal daily use. This switch is towards the rear near the lens mount itself, to give us several options. You can change from manual to autofocus, a focusing range toggle, which will take us from six meters to infinity, which is obviously mildly quicker, all full range, which is from 2.2 meters to infinity. VR on and off, and the actual VR mode, whether it be normal or active. For the actual lens, I think it's an absolutely wonderful bargain to have. It's brilliant. I will compare it in a second to the 70-200mm that I have, f2.8, and you'll be able to see that the quality looks pretty similar in the two lenses. There is a size difference between the two, however. If we can just forget about the cheapy things that came with it, as in the rubbishy lens sock and the hood, then all can be forgiven. So let's have a look at the two lenses. We've got extra mode buttons at the front of the f2.8, which is in the lower part of the frame and the lens hood itself is of much higher quality a much denser material also has a little clip that you have to press to be able to release it if you look at from the rear going forwards you can see the actual width of the lens is significantly less than the 500 millimeter my f 2.8 lens on the left here is significantly shorter um, it doesn't extend either because everything's kept internally however compare the two together you can see a huge difference yet again but this is a huge lens, big statement. It's massive. It feels great though, gives you a lot of confidence for some reason. It feels like it should be heavier than what it is. I've completely retracted the lens and reversed the hood so you can get an idea of how compact it can be. I'm also going to attach it to a camera, my D3. It's pretty compact given the size of lens. Remember, if you had a telephoto 600 or 500, you couldn't adjust the size. That would just be it. So you're stuffed. However, this gives you options. I'm now going to attach it to my Nikon D3. It's partially weather sealed at the rear and it has a nice solid click. Feels nice in the hand, but uh, total weight with the D3 will certainly whack it up a bit, certainly towards the seven, eight pound scenario. So heavy old camera this. Please remember there's a reason why I'm handling it mainly at the lens. That's because it's so heavy. The camera attaches to the lens. It's not the other way around. You don't attach the lens to the camera and then hold the camera to hold the lens. It'll break the mount, trust me. It'll ruin it all. Okay, let's do some test shots, see what it sounds like, how quickly it focuses. I will be field testing this lens with this camera and indeed any other camera I can lay my hands on. So I look forward to seeing you soon.